Hans Larsen, director of the Red Path Museum at McGill University, uh, and one of my colleagues who does a lot of paleontological work and a lot of comparative anatomy. So he knows a lot about this stuff, and so I brought him over to the garage, set him up a, a studio for him to talk to us about primarily heterodonty and differences among evolutionary lineages in the way their teeth work, and I'm sure we'll find other cool things to talk about as well along the way. So the, the really cool thing with mammals is that we have super complex teeth, and you might not appreciate it because all our teeth kind of look the same as, 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 as humans, but if you pick up any mammal skull, or I'll pick up this, this, uh, this grizzly bear, for example, and you can quickly see that every tooth is identifiable. And so like all the incisors, all the canines, all these premolars and molars, every tooth is, is, so, is so discreet. Um, and one of the key features of all mammals, if we go way back in time, like 250 million years ago, is that they have canines. And canines are one of these key innovations. Like it's the, it's the thing that, got, that really kick-started mammal evolution because when, once they got canines, they took off. And so the ability to have this like single elongate uh, tooth near the front of the skull, it's the very first tooth in the maxilla, like this bone right here. And it's, it's uh, most skulls, most mammal skulls, if they have a canine, are really invested in that. So if you look at a bear, all of this is invested in supporting that canine. So here, here's the canines, and you can see the canine is sitting at the very front of this bone. This bone is called the maxilla, and here's the premaxillary bone. And so all this, and if you look at on the side, this canine, the root, actually goes way up in here. So this whole bulge is holding the base of this canine that sticks out right here. A few mammals get rid of that, surprisingly, and the ones that get rid of them are the ones that don't need to eat meat. So if you look at something like a deer, deers have no canines, nothing in there at all. And what this does is it opens up this free space. It's called a diastema. And it's this space where there's, a, where there's no teeth, in the case of a deer, and, and a lot of, a lot of like really advanced herbivores, they have no teeth even on the front of the jaw. So they have basically just like gum. So they have a gum on the front with these tiny little nipping teeth on the bottom that press up into that gum. So this is, this is made for eating soft vegetation. So if you look at, if you look at a close up on these teeth, and these are really cool, like the teeth almost come out like a, like a, like a spatula or, or a, like, a, like, a, like a rice paddle on the front. These big sort of, sort of scooping teeth with these like little bristling um, uh, uh, procumbent is what they're called when the teeth stick out. These spatulate teeth help to sort of scoop in soft vegetation. So it could be like plants. And then when they, when they get to the back of the jaw, they have these like really complex um, scissored like or very, very, very sort of tightly uh, seesawed um, teeth that just go crunch, crunch, crunch and pulverize um, plants. This pulverization is pretty extreme in things like deer, and it's it's pretty extreme in horses. Here's a horse tooth with all these like complex ridges, and these complex ridges um, will will uh, as their teeth are grinding will sort of like like da, 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 like the other tooth on top will just like corrugate and corrugate, ripping apart all the plants that they're eating. So grass often is quite abrasive, right? So it causes teeth to wear down. So this is a one of these classic evolutionary arms race stories where here is a here's here's an animal that eats exclusively grass. Really, really uh, dissected teeth, so incredibly complex teeth. And uh, these meet the lower jaw, which are as complex. And so as they're chewing, that sort of complex um, sort of jaggedy edge tooth meets another jaggedy edge tooth and they just grind up and grind uh, their, their their grasses. Grasses are really tough to eat. Grasses have evolved pretty recently. They're only about 40 or so million years old, which, which is recent in, a, in a geological times or geological terms. And what's going on here is that, that these teeth, as they're eating grasses almost exclusively, the grasses uh, evolved silica, it's these little glass beads that they fill inside their leaves. And when animals are eating them, um, at least in the, in the earlier ones, they had, like, they had short teeth, kind of like us, and their teeth would just grind apart and they wouldn't be able to feed very, a lot on these grasses. And it, it, was, it was meant to deter feeding. Well, mammals, mammals figure that out by saying, well, let, let's just make a bigger tooth. 
So this is the tooth from a horse, and it's not so different from something like a cow. So um, the cow tooth, well, well the horse is really extreme, it's called hypsodonphy, um, where we have these like, really elongated teeth. These cow teeth are actually this big, enormous teeth. And so as these teeth are grinding down, uh, as they're, as they're wear, like wearing through these like glass, glass armored uh, grasses, the teeth just keeps on slowly coming out. So mammals are a bit um, um, odd in the animal world in that we only have two sets of teeth. There's a, there's a few oddballs, like elephants, manatees, um, actually replace their teeth from the back uh, um, continuously. But most mammals only have two sets of teeth, so our baby teeth, or milk teeth, and our adult teeth. And so this is as big as that tooth will ever be. And now it grows out, and when it gets to the bottom, it's done. And so by the end of, like a really mature cow, um, will actually not be able to feed much longer. To, to start with a carnivore, let's start with the wolverine, because this is the extreme. That there's, there's nothing more carnivore than a wolverine, and, and I, I can explain why. Most mammals, um, even when they're carnivores, so think like a cat, here's a little cat. Cats will prey on mice, right? So animals that are quite small. Wolverines, here's a, here's a wolverine skull, it seems pretty, pretty small, pretty timid. This thing feeds on deer. And so it's a giant, it feeds on giant prey, many times its body size. And so this is really what's called a hyper carnivore. There are very few hyper carnivores in the world. Wolverines are one, are, are one of them. Tigers are another, lions. We can do a little bit of comparison just between uh, two really cool, awesome or mammals, mustelids. One's a badger and the wolverine. If we compare these, these guys, which are really closely related, right? So here's the, here's the wolverine and here's the badger. They both live in North America. They're both like terrifyingly um, hyper carnivore animals. The, while the skulls are pretty similar superficially, when you open up their skulls, when you look at their jaws, there's actually a really, really neat difference between these guys. And if you take a look at the wolverine, it's taken its last molar and turned it sideways. And here's the badger, where it hasn't done that. This is more like the normal condition, where it's taken all its teeth and lined them up in a row. Here's the wolverine, it's actually taken that tooth and turned it sideways. And the, the adaptation for that is, is partly for just crushing. So this can take, it can take this, this, this tooth and just break things apart uh, with, with the back of its skull. So this is where it has the most, most mechanical advantage. When, when, this, when the skull was prepared, its jaws actually don't go back together. And this is not uncommon in mustelids or, or weasel, the weasel family, especially wolverines, uh, because their jaws are so tightly locked. And in fact, Andrew has another skull where the jaws don't come out. And that's because these jaws, here, I'll do a close up here. This is where the lower jaw fits in. And you can see this big sort of paddle of bone. This locks the jaw in. So this animal can bite down with tremendous force and never dislocate its jaw. You can see just how how tight and how 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 have a, a complete roller joint this is like this is like one of the most um, uh, singular motion jaws in the mammal world like the, the, these guys have thrown out the idea of being able to dislocate and move the jaws around they just have they just have one purpose and that is to open and shut their jaw compare that to the cat skull here's where the it's a little lower jaw fits in it has a little paddle right there. And it bites down. It can it can sort of resist resist its jaw coming out. Bear it has a bit of a bit of a buttress here to stop that jaw from coming out, but the jaws come out no problem. And then compare this to something like a herbivore, and there's almost nothing holding that jaw in. It just sort of sits in the saddle. It can freely move around. That's because it doesn't have to bite hard. Yep. So it doesn't have to bite hard. And um, when you look at when when if if you've ever seen a cow feeding. You'll see, you'll notice that when it's feeding, it moves its jaws side to side, and like grinding. And it grinds across all these corrugations in its teeth. So it's just like grinding, grinding, grinding. And this is another key mammal feature. So along with, with when, when mammals evolved a canine, they also evolved a mobile jaw joint. And so having that mobile jaw joint allowed them to really find where their teeth lock together. And so cows take this to an extreme. They can sort of grind their teeth and sort of rasp their food across, across, across those teeth. 
if we look at the, the heterodonty condition in a carnivore, and, and these guys are extreme, they have these little tiny teeth on the front. It's almost like a serrated ice cream scoop. <laughs> and so this is the part that just goes, like slices and takes a big chunk of meat out um, after the prey is killed. This is the part that, that kills the prey, of course, right? So it, it, it attacks the prey and, and crushes. Um, wolverines will actually crush the spine. Uh, spine, if it's a, if it's a, uh, a felid, like a cat, they'll try and crush the, the jugular, like the, the front of the neck. Whereas, whereas uh, mustelids typically just break the spine from the back. But when they shut their jaw, then these back teeth, those sideways teeth on the back, on the, on the back, of, the, back of the upper jaw, uh, can just clamp down and break. So this is where all the muscles are <laughs> for closing the jaw, the temporalis muscle. This is where it hinges into the coronoid process of the, of the lower jaw. So that all that muscle is pulling this one lever up to break. So this crest is actually bone that grows up in between these muscles as they come up over the skull. And the muscles get so big, okay, if you think here, here, the, there, here the badger, the muscles grow up to about here, and then they, they don't get any bigger. Whereas in the, in the wolverine, they grow up and get bigger, and, and they're even leaving the skull. And the sagittal crest is a response to those muscles being so big that they're actually forming a bony ridge and a connection between those muscles. The wolves are a pretty generalist carnivore. Wolves, foxes, all canids in general. Then you can see it's got that sort of, uh, sort of um, really complex teeth on the front. So, so the, these incisors are actually a bit sort of diamond shaped. So they have multiple cusps. So like extra cusps on the, on the left and right or the mesial and lateral uh, sides of, of the teeth. And this is meant to help it sort of like, like pick food. So if you've ever seen a dog uh, uh, running around the field or, or in your house, you'll, you'll, you'll notice that it can easily pick up food off your plate or off the floor. And it has these like really cool teeth that can nip. So it can quickly pick up little things uh, with those teeth. And then once it opens, you can see where the, the canines <laughs> come into effect. So the, these massive, uh, massive teeth. And when it's biting or hunting prey, it's the canines that, that engage with the prey. No other tooth really engages with the, teeth, with the prey. It's just the canine. So it's, they've got four teeth for hunting, like the actual hunt part. After the hunt's over, then these are the teeth that sort of nip and sort of pull it apart, rip off the skin, take out the guts, uh, pull off the legs. When it comes to uh, mastication, the actual eating of, the, of whatever of its prey, it comes back now to the premolars and the molars. They, they can sort of find the place where their teeth are best, best going to fit and sort of slice their prey. This is the sort of generalist form. The more advanced form of that are things like cats. With their teeth, they've reduced their premolar and molars to just a, just a handful of teeth. So, so compare that to the dog, where there's a good five teeth uh, all in a row. And they're all, they're all pretty complex and they're all, they're all doing different things. And those teeth have only one function, and that is to slice. So imagine uh, like a serrated scissor that's like snip. And so it only snips meat. That's all it does. The average mammal is a rodent. Most, <laughs> most, 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 like the average body size of a, of a mammal is about the size of a rat. And there are uh, more than half the diversity of mammals are just in rodents. Check out this, this, th these teeth. Like, they are so wickedly different than any of the any of the other mammals we we, we we talked about. The first thing you'll notice, of course, are these enormous incisors, and these incisors have a color to them, right? So they have orange on the outside and white on the inside. And what they've done is they've put their enamel more on the outside of the tooth, and it's more dentine on the inside of the tooth. So as it's growing, the teeth are just curving out. And as they're chewing, that hard enamel wears less than the soft dentine. So these front teeth can actually chisel into the tooth and they're ever sharpening. And not only are they ever sharpening, they're ever growing. This tooth is, is actually uh, dislocated a bit, like it, it came out during preparation, but, but it gives you a sense for how long this tooth is. This tooth actually curls into the whole lower jaw. So if you were to look at the upper incisors for a, 
for, for this guy, for a muskrat, here's where it starts, here's where, where the crown ends, then the root goes all the way back to the eye socket. So this whole skull is just supporting those, 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 those enormous uh, incisors. Look at these, these molars. Just see how, how dissected they are. They are crazy complex teeth. And so these teeth are, they're not meant for like shearing like grass or, or chewing through, through animal flesh, uh, but they're, they're meant for chewing insects and like fine, fine little teeth that can nip and nip and nip. And so they're really great at, at sort of pulverizing uh, small, hard things like, like arthropods or insects. You see I'm having a hard time putting the lower jaw on, and that's because there's really nothing holding this jaw in place, <laughs> right? Look where the jaw joint is. It's this sort of basin, this whole spot. And so the motion I'm doing right now is exactly what this animal could do in life. It can actually move its jaw in all these positions, left and right, forward and backwards, uh, and of course up, uh, opening and closing. So this gives it tremendous versatility on how it places those chisel teeth. Another thing you'll notice too is that this, this big gap, like I can stick my finger through that gap, like right, right, right through the whole diastema. And so this is one of the ex most extreme uh, forms of, of, of sort of tooth heterodonty in mammals, where they have just a couple teeth on the front that are chisels, ever growing, and an, a battery of teeth on the back that all look the same, but, 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 but completely different from the chisel teeth on the front, separated by this big wide gap. And so like these are like, like hyper complex multifunctional uh, 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 dentitions. And that's, that's partly what makes rodents so successful. This is a seal, and um, these guys uh, have such different teeth than, than any, any mammal we've seen so far. And you can tell right away these teeth, they're, they're sort of like, like leaf-shaped, so multiple cusps uh, in a row, but, and you can, see, you can see just how far in a row they are, like they're really tight. Like there's almost no left-right expansion to those teeth. They just go back and forth like a big saw. And this is a classic dentition for fish-eating mammals, and fish-eating animals for that matter. And so, so having these like really complex teeth that form multiple points, but all in a thin line. They have these big hooked canines on the front, also for catching fish, big fish, uh, and so like hooking big things. And you can see just how deep those roots are. So they have two roots on the back, that fit into a tight socket. And in mentioning that, all mammals have teeth that fit into a tight socket in the bone. Mammals uh, and crocodiles and dinosaurs are unique in that every tooth is completely surrounded by bone in its, in its socket. So every tooth gets its own position. And that allows mammals and crocodiles and dinosaurs to have these incredible bite forces so that these teeth are just locked inside the skull and they can press as far as hard as they as hard as their heart's content can go and not dislocate their teeth. And this is a vampire bat. And so right away you can see why they call it a vampire bat. It's it's completely uh, expanded its its canines into these blades. And so so of course vampire bats feed on blood almost exclusively. And so they'll, they'll, they'll fly down, find a resting mammal, uh, and, and sort of nibble at it and start sucking its blood. This sagittal crest goes right up over the eyeball. <laughs> so this whole part of the skull is this, is this big temporalis muscle just sort of like slicing through. But like, I wouldn't think they would need to bite that hard. Yeah, but apparently it, like our skin is pretty tough. Okay, so um, Professor Longson. I'm going to do a blooper roll as well. Okay, uh, Professor Larson Hans, because I won't remember to call you Professor Hans. <laughs> okay, okay, Professor Larson, uh, because I won't remember to call you. <laughs> That's impossible to break. <laughs>